कुछ नहीं है ना क्या क्या थे पैक कर रहा है सर बाजू बना I'm about to tear this board up. This song will just forever be a classic. It don't matter where you are, what you doing, who you around. When you hear back that ass up, you don't have no choice but to back that ass up. Who doesn't know back that ass? In the cool check. Hey y'all, it's your girl when I just got a new microphone I forgot to turn on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Another Obsessed Astrology segment as part of Makeup and Mythology Monday. So if you like makeup, you like if you like mythological stories, this is the channel for you. Make sure you subscribe to check to come back for every Monday for a new story. And also I do some political commentary. I'm a big black lefty. Big fat queer. So if you like those things, if you like queer creators, black creators, that creators, creators that are just like freaking weird. This, I'm your girl. I'm your girl. So make sure you like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe and comment below. Especially if you're an Aquarius. If you have Aquarius business. Now again, remember my sun signs in Capricorn, but my moon, rising, Venus, and I believe Saturn are all in Aquarius. So I'm really more of an Aquarius bitch. No, it's still a Capricorn bitch though too. I love both of them. I can't, I can't try and like decide which one I love more. It's not right. I have already my eye base, the primer color can correct, and then some more concealer just to help cover up my flaws. Did my brows as well too. First I start with the eyes, and again I'm going to link all the products below in the description so you know what I'm using. Follow me and check it out so you can see what I use to get the look. And all that's been said, I'm out of breath. Let's begin. I love this beauty palette, like that love the sapphire expressions. And I just could not decide which one I would use for my shimmer, but do little swatches here. Which one do you like best? I think I know which one I'm going to use. So today we're talking about Aquarius, which is the 11th sign of the zodiac. Now, if you were born between January 20th and February 18th, that means you are an Aquarium sun. Yay! Oh, happy day! Aquarius season is an integral part of the rebirth and renewal of life during the winter and despite the name being aqua which we know means water Aquarius is the fixed air sign of the zodiac and don't worry we're gonna get into what all that means so now along with Taurus Leo and Scorpio. Aquarius completes the fixed zodiacs signs. It's the last fixed sign of the zodiac. Now the word fixed comes from the Latin root fixus, which means to latch or to fasten. I think we all kind of knew that, but you know, just etymology is kind of my thing. What can I say? Big signs, they fall in the middle of the season and they continue whatever has been going on. They continue. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, Aquarius is the middle of the winter season. Um, winter's been insane. We just had an ice storm here in Cincinnati. The fixed air sign Aquarius fixes on a continuum that reaches into the future and that can push reform or or spend a lifetime on personal inventions which either way sounds kind of sweet and think about it 
Now Aquarius completes the air sign trio along with Gemini and Libra. Who we both talked about previously those signs. Both fascinating stories. I just love air signs, don't you? Don't you just love air signs? I know I do. There's some kind of bias though. <laughs> air signs are known for spreading in ideas and are the communicators of the zodiac. And they are known to carry the winds of change. They are very intellectual, but do often tend to have their heads in the clouds. Fair, fair, fair. I'm gonna go with this. I think this is like the most aquiest blue color, so I'm gonna go with that going with that guy. So finding balance is very important for all of the air signs. Ooh, right, isn't that pretty? And they find balance by fostering healthy and balanced relationships, monitoring and budgeting their energy. They learn me better at doing as well and incorporating grounding practices. Just like that breathing thing they tell you do when you have anxiety. Aquarians, Aquarius people can be very free spirited, free spirited while also having some type A tendencies. You know, if you know, you know. Aquarius have a goal, they want to get it done. They are visionaries who aren't afraid of challenging the status quo. Probably like one of my favorite things about my Aquarius placements because I feel like I'm talking about myself too like very much. I want a better world I'm like love challenging this status quo. Stick to what you know. Stick to the status quo. What's not? They're arguably the most independent air sign. <laughs> now, the word Aquarius itself comes from Latin and it literally means like water barrier or like water carrier. Whatever word makes the most sense in your language. Now, aqua, of course, is the Latin prefix meaning water or pertaining to water. And then, uh, name for this sign comes from Greek, which is the hydrokos. We're on the screen because I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. Sorry, Greek people. I know a little bit. I don't know if you know a little Greek, so. Again, sorry, Greek people. The word hydrokonos is the water pour. Mm, water. And fun fact. Here he ends, like people were a former Christian sect that used water instead of wine for the Lord's Supper. Whatever's called your sect. I know we call it Passover, people call it communion, or soup, Eucharist, or something else like that, but I know we call it Passover, so they use water instead. I'm not sure where it's going to do but like in that, which I'm not sure where it's going to do in the Bible, but that is not of my business. So, one of the oldest civilizations, the Babylonians, Babylon, Babylon, they had an Aquarian figure known as the Great One, aka Gola. Gula. The constellation is generally portrayed as. A standing giant male figure that holds one or more vases of water. And basically this giant male figure would have overflowing streams of water coming from the vases. Which is interesting. Now the overflowing vases are meant to symbolize the fertile rains came from the heavens to feed mankind because of course what 
would anyone be without rain? Sometimes these vases are depicted at the giant male figure's feet to show the formation of lakes and rivers. They're sometimes where the Great One was shown in both masculine and feminine forms. Great One is very closely associated with the God of Wisdom and Water who is Iggy or Aya from before. We are the oh, yeah. The original origins of Aquarius as the Great One are traced back to Lamu. That's hilarious. The new hero. Then in Mesopotamian mythology, the god and goddess Lamu Ahanu, which I think is actually kind of a sweet name, not gonna lie. It's kind of a really cool fucking name. Were the first gods to be born into the chaos and that was created by the merging of Absu, the watery deep, the watery depth beneath the earth, and Tiamat, the personification of salt waters, to become part of the Enuma Elish. And they usually represented silt. In some texts, they take on the form of serpents and glide like the ripple of water, which is weird. Again, kind of like the other goat fish, there aren't too many prophecies that were written about the Great One. Um, they're great. No improvement needed, I guess. We're gonna go to our trusty, trusty friends, the Greeks, because there are two characters within Greek mythology believed to be Aquarian figures. Now, during what was called the Deucalion Deluge, Zeus, you know, fuckboy Zeus, said to have poured all the waters from the heavens out into the earth to wash away and destroy all the wicked and evil men at the same time. That's a lot of something that happened in the Bible. Hmm. Sounds very similar to something that happened in the Bible. Oh gosh, wow. Trust the process. It's gonna be fine, people. Once it's done, it's all going to be fine, okay? Do not panic. Do not panic. But basically, from this great flood of the world to kill all the wicked men, left two survivors, one being Delucian and he was a son of Prometheus. He was a son of Prometheus, you know, Prometheus. The other survivor was Pyretha, who was the daughter of Pandora. Now, <laughs> you know this part. Do Do Kalion and Pythra take refuge in a huge boat and stayed on the turbulent sea for? Euclian and Pyra stayed on that boat for nine days and nights until they reached Terra Firma. And then Zeus ordered them to throw stones that were to become people, both men and women. Just had a weird, like, Duke and Mage was responsible for making the men, and then Pyro was responsible for making the women. But just like, I guess, whatever. From this story, Zeus was known as the Water Bearer, as he had used his powers to rid the earth of all wickedness through the water of life. Don't think Zeus deserves that kind of name, but you know. Not my call. Not my call, you guys. From this story, Zeus was known as the Water Bearer as he had used his powers to rid the earth of all wickedness through the water of life. 
don't think Zeus there's a kind of name, but you know, not my call. Not my call, you guys. Okay, the second uh, figure that is seen as an Aquarian figure is Gan Ganymede, and this story involves Zeus as well. Ganymede was a divine hero of Troy, and thought to be the most exquisite youth to lay to anyone have ever laid eyes on. But even though he was only 15, Zeus wanted that ass. Now I know that older men taking young boys' lovers was common practice in ancient Greece, but we already know Zeus is a hoe. Hashtag Zeus the Predator. So now, does he introduce himself like a normal person and just go like, hey, hello, I'm Zeus, what's up? No, he doesn't do that. This time, Zeus transforms himself into an enormous eagle, swoops down and grabs Ganymede and takes him to Mount Olympus. Once they arrive at Mount Olympus, Zeus makes Ganymede his lover and cupbearer for the gods. As cupbearer, his job is uh, to bring the gods water, nectar, wine, all things which give them stamina and keep them young forever. He's pretty much, pretty much like a slave and um, as time goes by, he's there for an undetermined amount of time. One day he's fed up and uh, through like during a fit of temper of him going off, he empties out all the drugs and nectar that are for the gods and they fall to the earth as torrential rain that floods the world. So Zeus is pissed. Zeus rages out and roars at his lover and kills him. Upon reflection, Zeus realizes like, you know, he was a bit too harsh on his lover. He's only 15 years old, mind you. In return for his unfair treatment, he makes Ganymede the Aquarius constellation, which makes a, joy, a boy with a jug of water. Now for Aquarius, Aquarius' planetary ruler is Uranus, the planet known as the Great Awakener. It rules over freedom, revolution, the ability to visualize the possibilities and the urge for change. It promotes originality and liberation from conventionality. Aquarius represents the need for civilization to grow and to reform. The structures of society will stagnate and decline if not pushed through vision and innovation to change. Aquarius fights for humanitarian visions of a more equal future, and the process of individualization and enlightenment can only be fulfilled when the ego is transcended. Aquarius can awaken uh, to the truth of divine self in like Christ consciousness. The Aquarian vision builds on the realization of Capricorn and recognizes that all beings are interconnected. The self of one is the self of all. It's probably my favorite thing about like Aquarius placements about being Aquarius myself. I've Again, Aquarius Moon, Rising, Venus, and Saturn. So I definitely want a more humanitarian picture of the future. And I think like socialism in itself is like very Aquarian. And I know it's just dope. I love being an Aquarius Moon. Yay. Yay, Aquarian. What a bear of family. Oh, yeah. Here's the final look, and now it's time for the big six in Aquarius. One of the standout characteristics that those born under the sun sign of Aquarius is their unwillingness to follow the beaten track. With advancement and progress on their minds, there can always be an irreverence to old or outdated ways of thinking or doing things. Many aim to be themselves of personal and social conditioning, uh, open to change in theory, they can be surprisingly stubborn, their idealism runs strong, but they can be very fixed in their ideas. Uh, they're very, usually well-liked, are curious, observant, um, can be a little bit aloof and sometimes even standoffish, but uh, they are very witty and intellectual as well and value progress and frankness. Awesome. Moon and Aquarius people are very observant. They are lifetime students of human nature and love analyzing why people do what they do. This stems from a detached, uh, even sometimes shy personality, especially in youth. Um, they tend to grow up feeling different. They are sociable, but they are also loners at, loners at heart. They have strong egos and can be very unique and unusual. And their inner feeling of loneliness puts them in like this feeling of outside looking in. They do still have a very uh, idealistic and progressive streak. Um, they will tend to be very willful, especially even in childhood. 
um they generally want to handle their strong needs their desire for independence is powerful no matter what age the tendency to be humanitarian shows up very powerfully in this moon sign their kindness and concern for others is generally more broad philosophy of life you know i'm very much with people close to them as well unconventional self-expression mercury and aquarius people enjoy breaking the rules and they're not necessarily loud or flamboyant people but they do often have a way of quietly stirring things up they have delight in exposing what they deem biases in their people's way of thinking very quick to contact others or offer perspective. they enjoy intellectual debates they're very quick and alert and the powers of observation are particularly strong they usually win debates in fact they're very interested in scoring intellectual points which can be managed other times it's a very attached intellectual sign by nature they want to be stubborn when they have an electoral agenda. They're often forcing, even divorcing their ideas onto others, and is apparent <laughs> intellectual superiority complex that can even intimidate others sometimes. But they also can make for delightful company, and they usually always have something interesting to say or give an introspective on a current event or issues in a delightfully unusual and happy way. Venus and Aquarius people try to impress you with their open minded, free, future thinking spirit. They want you to see them as unique, rebellious, and a little bit provocative. They are attractive when they're being a little bit aloof, and they want your knowledge and appreciate that they don't fall the beaten track when it comes to magical heart. Venus and Aquarius people are attracted to unusual and eventual relationships. They don't want to follow the rules, although they may make a few of their own. They appear seen off to times not threatened by returns of any kind. Um, they pleasing them, letting them know that you think they're interesting and that you respect their intellect on a superior level and that you're proud of their unique idea and visions dream along with them don't fence them in Being space to happily live and they'll return their favor and give you less room to read as well for being yourself it can be difficult to understand why exactly makes mars aquarius people tick um and it's absolutely fine with them they're surprising people they the tried and true methods of getting things done are far too worthless in this mars an original sign they have a rather original view of the world as well they're quite proud of themselves and their independence they're not easily pushed around with uh, they sign their progressive and open-minded, which comes to the world at large, but it can be surprising on a personal level that these people can be quite abstinent <laughs> or abstinent. They feel boxed in, they're quite likely to rebel, and they are not happy with being seen as normal, and they have plenty of energy and drive for their, like, possessed for Aquarius rising individuals come off as very original and unique, and they won't let you forget that fact. They possess intellectual poison savvy, they're often curious and quite learned, in both science and metaphysics, which anything opposed to the advancement of the human race will almost appeal to them. Um, it's hard to shock them. They've seen it all, and at least once you know that they think they have, but they do in fact enjoy shocking others. They're not that flamboyant by nature, but when they do, albeit quietly, they get a rise of others. They love it. Um, they can be provocative and irreverent. Uh, these people are quite friendly and likable. Their personality quirks go over well with many others. They generally feel there's a lot of room uh, of freedom and being very accepting. They can also seem kind of standoffish while coming across as humanitarian kind, but it's just like a magic of Aquarius for you. Okay, and that is going to be it for the Aquarius video. Anything surprising to you? Not really. Uh, I guess I thought it was funny. I don't know, the way that Juice is still always a creep in these stories, and uh, I guess the guy didn't really want to be part of the gods are abusive, so I guess I understand that too. But I do think it's interesting that like, in any society that the water bearer, the water carrier, is someone who like, brings life to society. So I think that says a lot about Aquarius and that they're really not able to bring so much life through um, vision and reform and change. Um, but let me know what you think. Let me know to me. Aquarius, take the time below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, love ya.